is Astral Soul Lightning, a podcast about making meaning through mythology, synchronicity, and the cosmos. Understanding the world and what it means to be human through a wider lens. We start with a doozy from News Nation reporter Libby Dean. Quote, Outside Trump trial, nearly 100 pink penis-shaped balloons with the faces of Judge Juan Mershon, Alvin Bragg, Jack Smith, and Judge Angoran taped to them released in front of the New York City courthouse. End quote. I have the picture on my social media threads account. Stay classy, MAGA. Oh my goodness. As we say so long to the grounded vibes of May, the gorgeous Sagittarius full moon awaits on May 23rd. Venus is at home in the constellation of Taurus, as Jupiter in Taurus finishes up a year of bountiful manifestation. The conjunctions are super buoyant, and it sets up a delivery system of what is earned as we move into Gemini season. Jupiter is the conductor of this big moon, so prepare for luxuriousness and taking stock in a way we normally don't on a full moon. After all, Sagittarius is involved. Gratitude is the word of the moment. The attitude of attracting to yourself what you desire at this moment, but also the opportunities you've manifested for yourself. Be grateful. It is a law of, an, of attraction magnet. Another one, the gratefulness, the, the, ener- the emotion and energy that comes up from your inner being when you are truly grateful. It doesn't have to be for everything, and you may have a lot of things going wrong in your life, but I bet if you try to find one thing you're grateful for, it will help your mood. And that's, that's how you get out of a ditch when you're feeling bad or lonely or depressed. I've been there, so I speak <laughs> from experience and with authority. Since the airy solar eclipse, much has unraveled and much has been rebuilt, while karmic debt has come due for some and secrets have been exposed. The big question now is, what is Jupiter in Gemini going to bring for the next year? No matter what your sun sign is or your rising sign is, we all have this energy in our lives. Communication and ideas could spring forth in a way you hadn't expected. Air energy is like that. It's highlighted highlighted the next year. So let's say you're a man born in June, so your sun sign is Gemini. You've been lucky all your life, but your actions haven't always been honest. Now the benefic sign of Jupiter comes to expand your world. Will Jupiter Jupiter expand the bad deeds that have been the hallmark of the man's life? Or will accountability be waived via Jupiter? This brings me to the Trump New York trial. The wild card that appears when Jupiter goes into Gemini revolves around Trump because his sun sign is Gemini. Normally, the planet of blessings, abundance, and expansion would deliver protection and bounty for someone with his archetype hovering over their life. I'll just say no one escapes karma. So as Trump turns, I think it's 78, it could be his turn. But what does Jupiter and Gemini mean when you have a liar, manipulator, and charlatan whose shadow side revolves around escaping justice and becoming president again by whatever means necessary? We're about to find out. As for the Trump trial in New York, closing arguments are set to start next week on Tuesday as Gemini season begins. This week, this week ended with a bang as the Trump defense cross-examined Michael Cohen and zeroed in on a one-minute and 30-second phone call that had everyone buzzing. 
Ari Melber of MSNBC, a lawyer, had the best soundbite on this. On Tuesday, there were bruises. Today, there was blood, end quote. My assessment was different. The defense finally awakened, but the phone call isn't the blockbuster everyone thinks, in my opinion, because the defense still has no answer for the documents that are foundational to this case. As lawyers say, this is a paper case, a paper trail case. The bottom line, the only opinion that matters is the jury's. Trump did admit something that hasn't gotten much attention from the social media account handle Mueller, she wrote, on social media. Quote, wow, in his daily courthouse remarks, Trump just admitted that he was part of the NDA with Stormy Daniels. I have only, I have the only illegal NDA, Trump said. He's trying to say all NDAs are legal. But he's just admitted he's part of the NDA. That kind of blows his whole defense to smithereens, end quote. That's what I'm talking about is the actual documents that corner him. But we shall see. One secret has been exposed this week. It took a long time for this bit of news to rise to the New York Times front page. After January 6th, There was an upside-down flag flown at Justice Alito's home. The New York Times got their hands on the photo and published the story this week. The discovery of an upside-down flag, which was the symbol of the Stop the Steal cult, has thrown more scrutiny on Alito, who many believe leaked the draft of the Dobbs decision overturning Roe. The New York Times article on Alito comes as the Supreme Court is currently deciding whether Trump has absolute immunity. It's important to remember, Clarence Thomas's wife was at the January 6th event trading texts with Mark Meadows. Why they both aren't recused from the immunity case is on John Roberts and a court that has disgraced itself on the altar of all things Trump. Interesting to note, at least to me, Alito gave a a statement to Fox News that it was his wife who flew the flag. Here's his statement. Quote, I had no involvement whatsoever in the flying of the flag, Justice Alito said in an emailed statement to the Times. Quote, it was briefly placed by Mrs. Alito in response to a neighbor's use of objectionable and personally insulting language on yard signs, end quote. Alito thought he'd gotten away with it, that nobody knew. Evidently, his neighbors provided the photo. Shannon Bream of Fox News spoke directly to Alito and posted the story on social media. Alito talked only to Fox, by the way, from Bream, quote, I spoke directly with Justice Alito about the flag story in the New York Times. In addition to what's in the story, he told me a neighbor on their street had a, quote, F. Trump sign that was within 50 feet of where children await the school bus in January 21. Mrs. Alito brought this up with the neighbor. I'm going to break into this in a sidebar. Uh, There were... uh, The children were off that week, uh, according to other reports, so there were no children uh, stopping and waiting for a bus at that time. Anyway, uh, going on with uh, the quote from uh, Bream on social media, quote, according to Justice Alito, things escalated, and the neighbor put up a sign personally addressing Mrs. Alito and blaming her for the January 6th attacks. Justice Alito says he and his wife were walking in the neighborhood and there were words between Mrs. Alito and a male at the home with the sign. Alito says the man engaged in vulgar language, quote, including the C word. Following the exchange, Mrs. Alito was distraught and hung the flag upside down for a short time 
Justice Alito says some neighbors on his street are very political and acknowledges it was a very heated time in January 2021. End quote from Bream. <laughs> really? <laughs> heated time? And oh, Mrs. Alito was distraught. A Supreme Court justice calls a known right-wing media outlet that acts like an arm of the Trump campaign, that's Fox News, but his neighbors are political. Chris Hayes from MSNBC had the perfect retort on social media. Quote, best part of the Alito statement, the most perfect distillation of his entire worldview is him saying it's his neighbors who are very political. Not the Alitos, of course. The ones who went through the trouble of flying a coup flag. End quote. <laughs> Conservative foreign policy expert Tom Nichols had this to say on so social media about it. Quote, as right-wingers circle the wagons around Alito and claim this is a nothing burger, remember how they'd be writing about it if Soto Mayor said that her husband snuck around her back and flew an anarchist flag because someone had a Trump sign on their lawn, end quote. <laughs> oh, boy, this is the kind of back and forth until the end of November uh, humanity stands between what's ending and what's, a, what's beginning. Everything depends on saner minds prevailing. Which brings me to the kicker of the Kansas City Chiefs, Harrison Butker, who decided to mansplain to graduating women during a, commence, a commencement speech at a Catholic private school, Benedictine College in Atchison, Kansas. Transcript is from CNN. Quote, this is what Harrison Butker, part of what he said in the commencement speech. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told, you, told to you, he said. How many, many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career. Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. Butker also praised his wife, Isabel, saying she, quote, would be the first to say her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother, end quote. The backlash has been epic. Butker pontificated on the, quote, deadly sin sort of pride that has a month dedicated to it, end quote. A shot at Pride Month, which is June. He also slammed Biden for his support of full equality for women, including full freedoms that include abortion rights. On the capitalist side of things, the right wing keep uh, the right wing, excuse me, the right wing keep women at home cult is buying his jersey and celebrating their more minority status. Oh, boy. The NFL chief of diversity and inclusion, Jonathan Bean, weighed in. Quote, Harrison Butker gave a speech in his personal capacity. His views are not those of the NFL as an organization. The NFL is steadfast in our commitment to inclusion, which only makes our league stronger. End quote. But wait, wait, there's more. And this is a classic. The nuns of Benedictine College, where Butker spoke, released a statement regarding his speech. It reads in part, quote, As a founding institution and sponsor of Benedictine College, the sister of the sisters of Mount St. Scholastica find it necessary to respond to the controversial remarks of Harrison Butker. 
The sisters do not believe that Harrison Butker's comments represent the Catholic Benedictine liberal arts college that our founders envisioned and in which we have been so invested. Instead of promoting unity in our church, our nation, and the world, his comments seem to have fostered division. One of our concerns was the assertion that being a homemaker is the highest calling for a woman. We sisters have dedicated our lives to God and God's people, including the many women whom we have taught and influenced during the past 160 years. These women have made a tremendous difference in the world in their roles as wives and mothers and through their God-given gifts in leadership, scholarship, and their careers. Our community has taught young women and men not just how to be quote-unquote homemakers in a limited sense, but rather how to make a gospel-centered, compassionate home within themselves where they can welcome others as Christ, empowering them to be the best versions of themselves. We reject a narrow definition of what it means to be Catholic. And it goes on from there, end quote. Can't wait until football season. <laughs> Every time he kicks, I hope he gets booed. <laughs> With Memorial Day and summer break ahead, there's much afoot underneath what we can see. There aren't too many times where I cover the astrology in specifics because I'm not an astrologer, but the shifts coming are not minor events, and I'm already feeling what's about to come in the future. I've told you this before, but uh, I've honed this talent and gift. We all have it, but I have made it my purpose because it is my purpose to understand these things as a philosopher and I am already feeling the changes and uh, what's about to happen. As we live today, there's an intensity with water energy represent, represented by two strong archetypes, Neptune and Pisces, with Neptune at the last degree until September, the anoretic 29th degree. That's the tension you may be feeling, the oh, it's just, it gets tight. You can't, it, we, we can't break through yet. We have to wait. Every day we get closer and the tension intensifies. The good are ready to make a move that way and the bad, uh, the, the shadow side, the bad of people who won't evolve are ready to do something on the evil side. But artistry creating beauty, but also feelings of compassion compete with the shadow side of these archetypes, archetypes represented by conspiracies and people willing to believe anything. And don't forget, Saturn is still in Pisces, the great, um, let's see what, architect builder of your life. The, that's there. And part of all this is the spiritual versus the mundane life we live every day and the spiritual tension as well, and it's represented in this Butker versus the nuns conversation, as well as what's going on with the Supreme Court, uh, Trump, and truth and lies, democracy or autocracy. Relief comes in September on the Neptune Pisces score as we ready for a new eclipse pairing on the Pisces-Virgo axis. Now, this comes in September, and it's going to be a whole new thing. Uh, Pisces is very emotional. It's very watery, and reactions can go all over the map. I've talked a lot about the changes coming in September. I've, I've been trying to warn people. I realize some people check in with some podcasts and out, but these are huge events that we have chosen to be here for because we are going to change what has come before. One of them, uh, the changes in the fall, is Pluto is also at the anoretic degree, which uh, starts happening um, 
in September, September 1 till the end of November. This, all of this is combustible energy and tension because of this anoretic 29th degree. You know, you're going to hear, if you look, if you decide to look into pop astrology, I, I just want to say people are uh, warning about all sorts of things in the, because it doesn't just happen to us personally, it happens in the world. And people are warning about world events and what could happen in the world. Uh, as I say often to my clients, you, it does you no good to worry about things over which you have no control. Concentrate on your own life, down on joy and play. Now, it's going to be election season this fall. With the United States presiden presidential election gearing up when the archetype Pluto begins the last interaction with Capricorn before the Aquarian vibe takes over for 20 years in late November. This is the culmination of the Obama Biden years and eras, and we get to decide if what Obama and Biden have tried to do is going to stick. It's up to each of us. Take someone to, to register to vote with you. That's what I have to say. That's the kind of positive things you can do. <laughs> There's just so much afoot between now and fall. This weekend, for those of you listening um, uh, in, uh, on May 17th, this weekend is a positive energy extravaganza with the crescendo building to the gorgeous Sag moon, full moon, aspected by Venus and Jupiter on the 23rd. Gem Gemini season on May 20th brings an active mind and ideas galore. But don't forget the follow-through. That's what matters. <laughs> Jupiter and Gemini is a tight fit, which isn't the customary vibe when the planet of expansion visits. Detailed-oriented Gemini, ruled by the archetype Mercury, isn't comfortable stretching out without knowing specifics. Jupiter expands everything, so the things a Gemini archetype represent will broaden. The themes of Gemini, communication, via Mercury and ideas, expand during Jupiter's visit. There's a tension in Gemini for shadow side individuals because of the truth versus lies uh, aspect of this archetype. Two sides, the twins, a.k.a. Gemini, brings duality into the picture. Spiritual, spiritual versus capitalistic with um, a strong emphasis for all you uh, creative people, and myself included, of course, content writing with Jupiter pushing our boundaries to think wider on our ideas. Although, I got to tell you, I don't expect anything will make MAGA men and their trad wives see the light shining down on all humans to aid our experiences and live authentically through evolutionary change. With Memorial Day next weekend, it's my customary time to step back, a time for me to do extra research, read, and contemplate. Have some fun, too. <laughs> I'll be back over the summer break, although it won't be my regular schedule. I'll chime in whenever big news hits, but it won't necessarily be on Friday. So subscribe if you don't want to miss my impromptu summer notes editions of this podcast. I'm Taylor Marsh, and you've been listening to Astral Soul Lightning. You can find out more about me at taylormarsh.com. Sign up for my newsletter so you won't miss anything this summer. As I say to all grown-ups this time of year, remember to play. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Until next time.